you know, for Kellen and, and people that are feeling that way, they're, they're hopeless. And, and the people that love them feel helpless. Tonight, a lifeline to other families struggling with their sons and mental health. So many of our kids, and especially our boys, are struggling right now. That's why we're dedicating this week to helping start a difficult conversation dedicated to saving our sons. What makes boys so vulnerable and what can we do to help them? Derek Dice is here with an in-depth conversation with a family who lost so much. Well, Nia, Kellen Erickson seemed to have a bright future ahead of him. But what nobody saw was the depression that had taken hold of him and led to his death by suicide two years ago. I spoke to Kellen's family about the son, nephew, and grandson they lost far too soon and how his loss has inspired them to start a foundation in his name. Just a great kid. Um, ever since he was little, just always smiling, big brown eyes, <laughs> fun to be around. Kellen was the middle of Mike and Kimber Erickson's three children and their only son. He just was a sweet kid, really sweet kid. That sweet kid treated everyone with kindness, especially his younger cousins. He could wrestle and he could horse around with our guys. He could just tolerate the rascal, the rascalness of the young guys. And uh, he was just, you know, he was just so patient and loving with those guys. Teachers really enjoyed him and his classmates enjoyed him. And and, um, you know, he just grew into an outstanding young man. But what most people didn't see was that outstanding young man was struggling with depression. And during his junior year at Ferris High School, he finally admitted it to his parents. So he did get therapy. Um, he did great his senior year. He played well on the basketball team. He... Well enough to be a major contributor for the Saxons. Kind of thought that maybe it was just a, a speed bump and the road of life. But towards the end of his senior year, with his soccer team in the state semifinals, graduation just weeks away, and his future uncertain, Kellen's depression became right debilitating. It. it was such a deep depression at that point. His anxiety had grown into this just depression that where he couldn't function. Kind of really the anxiety of who am I, where do I go, what, what do I do next, I think really just grabbed him and, and pulled him down. Kellen started talking about suicide. Twice the Ericsons took him to the ER. Yeah, it's excruciating. I mean, the days were, were long, just wondering what was gonna happen. And then it happened. Kellen died by suicide in January of 2020, just months after graduating from Ferris. Oh man, it was just, it was just so hard. It's so hard on the family and, it's in, and even through his friendships and community. At Kellen's memorial service, the church was packed with family and friends still in disbelief, many of them young men like Kellen. He'd only known what an impact that he made on, on all those people that, that love, loved him, love him still. Um, it just is, that's so sad that, that he had no idea how many people he touched. His uncle Kelly delivered the eulogy and was surprised by the response it drew. I mean, I probably had 50 parents come up to me after and were like, well, well what are we going to do? You know, and it's like, whoa, like this is definitely a real time. The family knew right then they wanted to do something to help. And what they found in their research was startling. Boys uh, die by suicide almost four times more than girls. That has to do with their, the differences in their brains. Boys are just struggling. That led them to start Kellen Cares, a foundation to help young men and their families navigate mental health issues. We just knew that we wanted to try to help because Kellen was a giver, he was a helper. Knowing what they know now, Kellen's family wonders if keeping him busy and constantly trying to cheer him up was the right approach. I think maybe he just needed to have some down time, but I was just, I just wanted to keep him moving. You know, he'd be struggling and I would come in and I just wasn't um, okay with him being sad, you know? I wanted to fix him. And I think as men, we want to fix, you know, and fix, fix, fix. And, and uh, it's just not the way we need to roll. This Saturday, a step forward. Kellen Cares is hosting his first event, the Helping Boys Thrive Summit, bringing in professionals to talk to families of boys who are struggling like Kellen was. You know, for Kellen and, and people that are feeling that way, they're, they're hopeless. And, and the people that love them feel helpless. 
So it's, it's kind of that gap between the hopeless and the helpless. And um, that's, a, that's a, a gap that we need to, to try to close or bridge. And it also keeps their sweet son's name at the forefront of everything they do. We miss that kid. Man, <laughs> do we miss that kid. And of course, a lot of people miss Kellen. And it's time for their family now to put that grief into action. And Derek, you've known the Ericsons for a long time. They're just one of those families that seem to have it all together. You know, and that's why their story, Nia, is so powerful. It can impact anyone's family. Depression can. And their strength now to share that grief and vulnerability is really what can save someone else's life. So tomorrow, we'll talk specifically about the Kellen Cares Foundation, the Helping Boys Thrive Summit, and what both hope to accomplish in another edition of Saving Our Sons. A very important conversation. Conversation. Thank you so much, Derek. You bet. Well, it's never too early to start talking about mental health. Local school counselors are doing this more often with elementary students. At Green Anchors Elementary, Christina Belknap says more young people are experiencing mental health concerns. Stress from the pandemic, isolation, and diminished social emotional learning is creating confusion for kids. Oftentimes, we have students here that are dealing with crises or dealing with anxiety and depression, and we um, have no idea. The school is combating this by screening kids through personal questionnaires. This allows the school to see if they need mental health resources. She also says they're working with Frontier Behavioral Health to connect families with mental health resources right at school. And we've got more to share, but we can't include it all on TV. So right now, you can download our streaming app free on your TV. Just search KXLY Plus for exclusive content and more conversation about this important issue. These conversations could save someone's life. We'll be right back.